Hey everybody, good to see you again. Uh, today's workout slash exercise video is gonna be kickboxing. Now, not the classic kickboxing, just kind of drills, not in a self-defense type way. So if you are a martial artist, this is not uh, self-defense. It's just kicking and punching drills, focusing today on punching drills that will help with coordination, balance, hand-eye coordination, that kind of stuff. So as you can see, we have the bag in the background. Uh, we are going to be using that, but if you don't have access to a bag, whether it's a small bag or a heavy bag like that one, uh, you can still do it like a shadow boxing type thing, and I'll show you that as well. And it's just a good workout, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. This first drill is pretty simple. We're just going to do punch, but I want to do throw in the knee too, just because it helps a little bit more with balance. Okay, so first of all, the definition of a jab is whichever foot's leading. So in this case, my left foot is in front, which means my left hand is the jab. Conversely to that, that means the right hand is the cross. Visually, it looks like the same type of punch, and technically it is, but for my right hand to be a jab, I have to now put my right foot forward. So then that's jab, and now the left hand's crossed. If you're not used to this, it could be a little confusing, but the reason for that is that the lead leg also means that hand has a farther reach than my backhand. So it's going to be jab, and then the power punch is from the back leg. That's the cross. So on this one, you could do jab, cross, clear knee, jab, cross, clear knee. So I'm not going super hard right now, but you could add speed. You don't have to hit the bag hard. Like this one's pretty soft, so I don't have to wear gloves. It's not going to hurt my knuckles. Jab, cross. Jab, cross. Now the key to success on this one is trying not to, you know, after you punch and you go to do the knee kick, is add your hands. Now if you need to at initially because of a balance issue, then by all means do it. Or, once again, back up a little bit, jab, cross. So you don't have to use the back. It's just nice for people because there's a visual target. Jab, cross, knee. Obviously you make contact, so mentally it's a little tough, easier to do that exercise. All right, so on this one, once again, if you're using a bag, not all of the movements have to make contact with the bag. So for example, on this one, if I left foot forward, so if I do jab and I want to do a hook punch, that's too far away because a hook punch is like this. I'm coming across my body. There's not a lot of space here. So it's jab, cross, or hook punch, excuse me. Jab, hook punch, and then if I want, I could do knee for the back knee, and then as I come down, down house elbow. Or if you don't want to add legs right now, that's fine. So it's jab, hook punch, roundhouse elbow, okay? Jab, hook punch, roundhouse elbow. So you could speed it up, you could slow it down, depending on your comfort level, depending on what, how much experience you have. But once again, if you do it, try not to hold your breath and it will get your heart rate going, even if you are breathing. Okay, once again, nice posture, jab, load, Bridge hand, jab hand. Load's always important because if I have this hand here, it's not in position to load. See where it is? I have to load, jab. But then this hand's not ready to punch because I have to bring it up. So that's where the coordination part comes in too. Jab, load, and as you see, I'm, as I'm coming out with my rich hand, my left hand's coming in for the load, so it's cocked and ready. Boom, hit. So same thing if I want to do on the other side, switch. So now the other hand becomes a jab. Jab, as I pull back that hand, my other hand's loading for the rich hand. Rich hand, punch again. So jab, punch, rich hand with the other hand, jab again. Jab, rich hand, punch, punch. And I don't know if you noticed, I messed up one or two <laughs> kick uh, punching combinations because I'm not used to jabbing with my right hand. So I did a cross rich hand. So anyway, that front side, see? Because it takes coordination, even I screwed up there. So it's jab, rich hand, jab again. And don't worry if you messed up. I'm just saying it because I'm caught on tape here 
messing up. And if it caught your eye, good. I'm glad you noticed it. Uh, it felt a little embarrassing since I'm on tape doing it, but once again, it's just to get your heart rate up. So unless you're being graded on this, shake it off, don't worry about it, and just have fun with it. Now on this one, I'm gonna be using what we call a rich hand. So what that one is, is my thumb goes through my pinky, but I try to keep my hand straight. So I'm not curling my fingers. It's like a chop, but then I bring my thumb towards my pinky because this is the part I'm striking with right here. So if I'm in my left forward stance so I can get my jab, I load to the other side of my ribs, bridge hand, and then I can do a jab again. So it's jab, bridge hand, jab, jab, bridge hand, jab. So typically you want to hit to the face in a self-defense situation on this one, but bridge hands could go to the ribs, face, wherever. Once again, this isn't self-defense, so I'm going to hit where I feel comfortable on this, this target. So as I just said, you want to have fun with these and you can do as many different types of combinations as you feel like. Of course, the more combinations you do, the harder it is to remember, especially the older you get. But that's not necessarily too true because my younger students, they really have trouble staying focused, which means they have trouble remembering these combinations. But the key is you could do you know, jab, jab, cross, front knee, Roundhouse elbow, upward elbow, bridge hand, chop, whatever. Once again, the key is to have fun, try to hit the target. If you have something that you're actually making contact with, just make sure your fists are proper, that you know, you're not hitting things from a weird angle, because this does have some weight, even though it's not particularly heavy, except for in the base, you don't want to sprain your wrist or do anything like that. So once again, if you want to practice where you're not making contact with it, and doing that kind of thing, you could certainly do so. It just is a little bit more fun when you do make contact, not just because you could pretend it's a bad guy, but that way it's a more visual thing, because if this wasn't here, and I'm hitting here to nothing, I'm used to doing it, so I can do it, but if you're not used to doing it, it just takes practice, that's all. So once again, have fun with it. Hope you liked the video. I try to make it real short and sweet, but those are a good set to practice with. Uh, at least to get your feet wet if you're not used to it, or maybe if you are used to it, it gave you a few ideas. So you know the drill. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, share with your friends or anybody you think could uh, benefit from this. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks again. Have a good day.